Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make, or assemble rather, the PXP gamepad. You'll need one PCB. I got these from JLC PCB. It was about $5 shipped, so fairly inexpensive. In addition to this custom made PCB, we're going to need a 2040-0. This is a microcontroller based on the RP2040 chip. And for the firmware, we're going to be using GP2040 Community Edition. You'll need two of these PSP3000 joysticks. Now these come with tall uh, thumb caps, but if you really want, you can swap them out for these thinner ones meant for the PSP1000. For the shoulder buttons, we're going to be using these tiny little switches. They're Panasonic. I'll have the model numbers in the description. But we will need two of these shoulder buttons. Then we'll need two of these connectors. These are to connect the joysticks to the board, since these already come with a four pin flat flex cable attached. Next, you'll need 14 of these switches. These are the 5.2 millimeter on each side. So 14 of these. We will need M2 by 8 millimeter screws. These are countersunk. And then this is optional, but to attach your phone to the controller, I recommend this. It's a dual lock from 3M. It's basically industrial grade uh, Velcro. And then for the case, there's going to be four, or there's going to be a few pieces. First one is this. This is the face plate. Um, this is straight off the 3D printer. I'll show you how I clear up the uh, support material, as this piece does require support material. Then we have the back plate. This one can be printed without support and needs minimal cleanup. Then we have the shoulder buttons and the little pin for the D-pad. This one I did print with a brim, uh, and these uh, shoulder buttons do require a uh, support material, and I'll clean that up shortly. Next, you'll need uh, all the buttons and the center D-pad. I designed these to where they all can be printed without any support material. Granted, your uh, build plate adhesion is high enough. To clear up the support material, I'm going to use a knife and just wedge it out of there. There's not really a perfectly clean way to do this. I just have to hack at it. Be careful not to cut yourself with a knife. flex the board where the joystick connectors are. I'll do one at a time. I'm going to take the iron nice and hot. I'm just going to add a little bit of solder to these pads. Not too much, but just enough to cover them. I can go a little bit heavier on these uh, ground pads. Alright, that looks good. Let me wick. I went a little too heavy on these ground pads, so I'm going to wick away some. See what it looks like on that pad right there. I think that first one, the ground pad, needs a little bit more heat, but yeah, that looks better. All right, let me flex up the right side now. Yeah, that looks good. Get some on the ground pads. Now I'm going to take some alcohol, 
and just wipe away the excess flux so that we can put the new flux on before we put the connector on. All right, so I now have the board uh, set up on the vise so I can come in from the bottom and use the hot air gun to reflow these connectors on. So I'm gonna take these uh, connectors. I need two of them. I about four just in case I fucked two of them up and I needed replacements. And carefully place them onto the connectors. So I'll do the right one first. But I just wanna lightly get it under the outline. Yeah, that looks good. I'm gonna take the hot air station I think I have it at, let me see what temp I have that. So I have it at 375 Celsius. I'm gonna take it, my left hand from the bottom, and start heating up the area. And then I'm gonna come in with tweezers. When I see it molten, I'm just gonna come in lightly, tap down. I can still feel the solder is solidified. So I'm gonna wait longer for it to fully melt. I feel it's close. Okay, I think it's molten now. I'm gonna give it a few more seconds to fully melt. And I'm going to take it away while holding down on the connector. And then after around 10 or so seconds, it should be fully solidified. Definitely got the ground pads. Let me make sure I can open it still. Oh yeah, that still works good. All right, now that the board is fully heated, it should take a shorter time to get this fully soldered. So I'm going to let it melt, and then once I see it start to liquefy, I'm going to push down on the connector. Looks like they're still molten. They're still solid. There we go. Hold for a few seconds. Alright, and that one looks good. Let me check that it still opens. Yep, it still opens. So I want to check ground to 3.3 because that's the most important rail I don't want to short. Let's see, okay. Ground to 3.3, not shorted. Let's try ground to this one. Actually, let's see top from the bottom. No short, no short, no short. Okay, those all look good. So now what I'm going to do is plug in a another joysticks and see if we can get a good reading off of them. All right, there we go. I'm gonna close the tab. Right, now let's see if we get the proper resistance. So I believe the R stick should be up here. So let's check here and here. I'm getting five kilo ohm, which is perfect. And I'm gonna check the ground. I'm getting 3.8, and then let's check the other one. I'm getting 3.7, so that's perfect. So now I'm gonna check the resistances for the other, so the left stick. So let's go first do between both of them. That should be five kilo ohm. That's perfect. So I'm gonna check ground to them. Perfect, and then to the other one. Perfect. All right. Now that we have the joystick connected, it's time to work on the main button. So I'll get these opened up, and we'll start soldering these on them. And then all these are gonna be placed horizontally. You can see there's two pads, one here, one here. Um, those are just ground, so they're not strictly necessary. But if you want to solder them, you certainly can. All right. So to do this, I'm gonna set it off to the side. I'm gonna get my solder, clean my tip off, and then I'm just gonna do one of the pads. And then I'm gonna take the tweezers, hold the switch. I'm gonna solder it in place. Yeah, that looks good. The button feels good, so I'm gonna solder the other corner. Looks good. And then I'm gonna do all other sides. All right, that one got a little too much solder. But it looks fine. Looks like that one is touching the case. It's ground, so it's not gonna matter. Um, so I'm just gonna let that be. The top side is the signal, so that one you do not want shorted to ground. All right, now I'm just gonna check with a multimeter and make sure that at least this button is connected properly. So I'm gonna keep it in resistance mode, and this time I'm just gonna go off ground. Um, and then I'm gonna check the, let's see, this should be GP14. And then when I click the button, okay, yeah, that one is working properly. So now that we soldered one, I'm gonna do that same thing to the other 13. The ground pads are a lot harder to solder because they have a lot more mass behind them as opposed to the signal lines, which are fairly easy. All right, I think I got all of them soldered. I'm gonna go through and test with the multimeter. It works, all right. Now that all those are confirmed working, now um, soldering the final two buttons, which are the shoulder buttons on the back. And then these ones, uh, they have two little pegs on the bottom. They're supposed to line up with these holes. So these ones you can't really slide in place. You kind of just have to set them in the holes and then solder them. Like that. I, I can't tell, but I think those two are, are um, bridged, so I'm going to add a little bit of flux and clean that up. There we go. Let's do the same on the other side. Alright, that looks good. 
see the joints right there. That one's not as pretty, but you can see it worked out just fine. So let's get the other one soldered. So I got the right one soldered in. And I tested that with the multimeter and they're both good. So we're good for those. Now we need to solder in the 2040. And I already checked with the computer to make sure that this one is fully functional. So it's gonna be set upside down and then put right there in the center. So it looks like the USB is making it poke up ever so slight. So I'm gonna take and I take two of the other PCBs and I'll just use those to prop it up. You wanna line up the pads and that should be pretty close to where the board edge is. And the USB has ever so slight stick out. I'm gonna get my iron, make sure it's nice and hot. I'm gonna go in at the center pin and get that one first. Hmm, I think I'm ever so slightly crooked. I think I need to move the bottom slightly left. I think that's about as good as I can get it. So I'll make sure it's nice and flat and then tack the rest in. I'm gonna do the five volt pad first because that one doesn't go to anything, so it'll be very easy to solder. So I'm gonna make sure that all of these are all the way flat on the board. Be careful when you get to this pin because it is very close to the joystick. Let's reflow that first one. Perfect. Now you can see we got all of those soldered. Looks like it's not perfectly flat on the board, but I think it's gonna be close enough. Set it on something non-conductive and then plug it in. And then after you plug it in, you're gonna hold the boot key. And then while you hold that, you're gonna tap the reset and then let go of the boot key. And then you should be ready to drag and drop the firmware files. For the firmware, there are two downloads. The first is the flash nuke, which is going to erase the memory on board the microcontroller. And the second file is the firmware itself. After you put your device in boot select mode, it should show up as a removable drive named RPI RP2. First, you want to drag and drop the flash nuke, and that will erase the onboard memory. Then, Give it a few seconds and copy over the firmware itself. After you copy over the firmware file, unplug the controller, hold start or the lower right button while plugging in the controller. This will enable the web config mode and you can reach the web configurator by navigating to 192.168.7.1. Here we need to enable analog mode and change the values to the settings currently on screen. This firmware has lots of customizations, so feel free to explore and make changes where you see fit. All right, so now I would suggest doing a dry fit. So what you need to do is set all your 3D printed buttons in place, and then make sure that all of them are fully in their proper holes. The action buttons have a little tab on the top and bottom to make sure they don't spin, but these smaller buttons, you don't really need that, so just make sure they're all fully seated in the holes. All right, that's good, and also make sure you have your shoulder buttons in with the long side down, or facing the top of the controller, like this. All right, now we can set that to the side. And for the dry fit, um, all you need to do is place your PCB in the bottom. Make sure you got it nice and flat in there. There's a little bit of warp in this PCB, but that should be fine. So I'm gonna set that down, or rather hold this upside down, and then just kind of hold it on top and then try to get the um, shoulder buttons. You kind of have to lift up, like up like this on the shoulder buttons to make sure that the buttons uh, fully seat down. And then just hold it in place, uh, give it some pressure and test all the buttons. Um, the first time I tried this, the only buttons that I couldn't feel clicking right were the face buttons, these, bu these four buttons here. So what I did is I took it back apart, and then on the PCB itself, I added three layers of tape uh, as shims just to elevate the uh, faceplate off of the PCB a little bit so I can get those buttons to function properly. Another thing you could do is edit the faceplate buttons to be just shorter by maybe however thick three layers of scotch tape is. So that's another option you could do, but I didn't want to have to reprint the buttons, so I just added some tape to use as shims. All right, so after the initial test, I found that the phone's 4G connection was making the controller crash. So I'm gonna add some RF shielding to try to prevent the 4G connection from interfering with the microcontroller causing it to crash. And I'm gonna take the tape I had earlier off so we can, let's take this off as well. I doubt we'll need it after the shielding gets put in place. All right, so now we have that. Let's get the back shielding on. So this is gonna go right behind it like this. I'm gonna make sure that these buttons don't short out, which I think are good. Let's line it up, drop it down, and make sure that it'll crease around, which I think it's doing just fine. Let me just nudge it a little bit. Okay, that looks good. All right, that's nice and inserted. Now I just need to fold the flex cable ever so carefully. It's a little tight because of the foil, but I think I can get it. Ooh, yeah, it's definitely tight in there now. There we go. All right, perfect. Now let's do the other one. 
There we go. I'll carefully close the connector. Alright. Then we'll tuck in the cable. There we go. It's definitely more of a snug fit this time. Alright, now we can put in the top shield. Just like that. Alright, now I'm gonna get the hot glue. Just get a little dab in the corner. And then that's just gonna hold it in place while the while we assemble it. Oh, we got a little heavy there. Let me try to pull some of that away. Alright, I'm gonna add the tape I took away back into this spot just so I can get held in place properly. And then let me get rid of some of this excess glue on this side. I think that's going to be good. Let me fold this back down a little bit. Alright, now we're ready for the reassembly. Oh yeah, definitely a lot tighter this time. Let's get some of these screws in. Alright, let's check all our buttons. Alright, all our buttons feel good. Six feel good. Alright, now we can put in the last screws. Check our buttons. I think we went a little tight over here, so I'm going to loosen it slightly. Alright, that feels good. Let me make sure that these buttons are pressed. It'd be a little bit difficult to tell. Alright, so I got the buttons free. You can still hear the click. And now we're done. If you enjoyed this build video, leave a like. Thank you for watching.